HDB is a new database with some interesting superpowers. In this video, I will discuss this database, share my reactions and thoughts as we check the website together. Spoiler alert, it's impressive, it's almost perfect, with one small yet significant issue that prevents me from using it right now. Let's get started. So yesterday I was reading this article on Hacker News about SQL and its problems. So SQL has many problems, it's complex, it's difficult to combine uh, you know, parts of queries, it's difficult to extract certain things. And the article mentioned some solutions people are working on. And one of them was HDB, a database I haven't heard of uh, up to this point. I quickly skimmed through the website and I said to myself, this is perfect. Let's check the website together and I will tell you what I think about it while it's fresh. So if you go to hdb.com, you, you will see this website. HDB is a next generation database. So nowadays everything is next generation that gives developers superpowers. So right from the start, what I really like about this database is that it's built on top of PostgreSQL, which is a huge advantage in my opinion, because creating a database from scratch is a huge undertaking. And I'm not sure if I would trust something that was built um, from from scratch compared to something that exists for, for decades, like PostgreSQL or other established database. So that's a big point. So that's an important advantage. Then they introduce their own query language. It's called EdgeQL, uh, Edge Query Language. And the idea is to improve on the shortcomings of SQL. And when I check the language, I think they are doing a pretty good job on that. And you have other interesting features. For example, they provide you with a GraphQL endpoint out of the box. So you define your schema and then you can, you know, make GraphQL queries or trigger, uh, you know, make the mutations. It's all built in. So that's pretty interesting. So the first thing is the data modeling language. So instead of, um, so you can, you have a, a DSL, domain specific language they propose, and you can use this language to define your schema. So they use uh, the name type here, and you can define you know, fields so in your, on your database. You have some features from programming languages such as abstract types, um, you can define default values, some properties can be computed when the query is executing, executed. For example, each time you, you get uh, something from user, you can uppercase the name. You can easily uh, and expressively define constraints on the fields, uh, you, properties you have on your types, can also define indexes. So it looks uh, pretty interesting. There is uh, one thing I don't like here, but it's a minor thing. So I don't want if at some point creators of this database see this video or people that work are working on this project see this. I don't want them to feel bad. It's just, you know, small things, not really that important, but you I don't really like the fact that it's str. It's, it looks very Pythonic. In Python, you use this to define string. You know, the question I would ask myself, why it's not string? And often when I teach people programming, they tend to ask those questions. Why, for example, I have to use the full name of a type here, and then I have something like str. Why it's not string, and then why it's, you know, uppercase string and lowercase string, because in GraphQL, you have uppercase. In JavaScript or TypeScript, you have a lowercase. Mm. So it'd be nice if, if this is meant to have give people good developing, good development experience. It'd be nice to unify that somehow. But it's a minor thing again. 
then you have an extensive type system and here again a small complaint i'm not sure if this level of abstraction is necessary i would just prefer to define something like a number not uh you know know how many bytes it contains you have enums you can define arrays tuples custom colors so it's pretty great and then um, you can make relations between your types so normally you do this with foreign keys and here you have the notion of a link so you can uh, link to other type and this way you can express something like one to many relation or many to many relation and it reminds me somehow of the uh, active record from rails uh, the, you know it's, it's it looks very easy to define that and it's already in your database so it's not like uh, object relation mapping or, or something like abstraction on top it's directly into your database um, so this schema is defined and then the runtime can you know make certain things in a way that it's it's the the data is stored in the in the best possible way and you can extract the data in the best possible way it's already built in into your database engine which i find amazing so you can do some advanced modeling here you can split your schema in modules uh, again it reminds me a little bit of rails especially that the, the syntax is pretty pretty similar you can have custom functions which are with the signatures that are typed um, then you have object level constraints uh, polymorphic links expression aliases unions which can be recursive as we can see here so it's referring to itself it's pretty great uh, link properties so the language is looks impressive and i really like it with those small things that i mentioned so then you have edgeql which is the the query language they use let's start with the simple querying like so doing a select you just use the keyword select and then the name of the your table your container your type and find the fields you want to extract filtering filtering by id it looks very convenient and then deep fetching so you can define you know top level and then you can define the fields for uh, your sub uh, fields so in this case it's uh, hero is linked with uh, villains and you can extract that you can use computed properties uh, you have backward links and you can do mutations on your database so you can do an insert you can do an update um, here for an insert i was wondering if i can do an insert with uh, multiple values or, uh, you know using one statement one expression nested inserts that's pretty nice so you're inserting into your uh, into one table and into a linked table and then this statement and this expression will you know insert in both of those tables and combine and can connect them right away so it's pretty again pretty convenient absurd i'm using it pretty often and in postgresql there are some things that are not straightforward here the syntax looks pretty nice you have some advanced features so for example you have subqueries and this shows how easy it seems to compose queries and at the same time at the same time it looks very similar to how we would you uh, you know construct a graphql query so you would define you know the hero with the fields and then movies and again the fields so it's pretty pretty nice uh, unions with clause json casting aggregations uh, polymorphism looks pretty impressive i really like that and then you have painless migrations so that's something that looks very similar to uh, how git works so the idea is that you define your schema and then you change your schema so for example you change the names for your types 
or you change the names for your properties or you add properties or delete properties. And then you can run the HDB command line tool and it detects, uh, the tool detects what was changed and proposes you, asks you if you want to, uh, you know, include that change and then it generates a migration so that you know how to go from the, uh, you know, the, um, the schema you had to the schema you want to have. And it look, it's somehow similar to how git add-p work. So when you execute that, you, it means that you want to add chunks of the changes you made to your files and git asks you about those changes. You can include them or not. Uh, reject and here it's it's very similar but you have this built in into into your database and finally something which is a small thing but it looks very interesting you have graphql built in, in into your database so you can just enable it using an extension and then hdb will generate an endpoint for you and you can now create GraphQL queries and mutations, and you can send to that endpoint to get the data out or to get the data in. So you can do a simple query, you can nest queries, of course, filtering uh, works out of the box, you have uh, some operators, you can do some advanced filtering. Uh, it's, it's very impressive. And then mutations, so, you know, insert, update, um, and all that stuff. And now, finally, the thing that prevents me from using it. So I was thinking, this looks so good. This is the perfect uh, database almost. Something I was looking uh, for years uh, to be created, or I was even thinking on maybe not creating it, but you know, uh, I was wondering why no one has created something like that. And it seems HDB is very close to, to this. And so I went to see how I can use it with different programming languages. And uh, right now I'm mostly using TypeScript. So I checked the docs, basic usage, and a small letdown. Because here, as you can see, I define queries with strings. And then I define the values that are then replaced in those strings. So this is not a way for me to construct queries in applications. Uh, I would prefer they, pr they provide something like Prisma.js. So I have uh, auto-completion for tables, and then I can execute a query or, or a mutation, and the fields in the database are also proposed, auto-completed. So I exactly know what's there, and this allows me for a better development developer experience. So if they add something like Prisma uh, has right now, I think that would be uh, amazing. And I think this project would be very successful. But right now, I wouldn't like to write queries this way. Uh, so I will, I will wait uh, till those autocomplete, autocompletion feature is, is uh, added. And I think it, it seems logical they are probably working on this right now. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. There's one interesting thing I found. There is a book. Um, someone wrote a book, uh, illustrated book about HDB. So if you go to HDB slash easy HDB, it's about HDB and how databases work and it's a uh, plain English, simple English, you have some illustrations, some story, um, and explains all the things you can do. And you have some exercises. Uh, I'm not sure if they are interactive. But all in all, it's pretty interesting approach for teaching. I encourage you to check it out. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's as all my I know scattered thoughts about HDB. Um, I'm pretty enthusiastic about this project. I think I have a sensation. I have a feeling that it's going to be very successful. There are some minor things that are missing, 
uh, for me at least and um, I will be checking it out from time to time. If you're interested, I can do some more I you know hands-on tutorial about that because I will be checking that despite the, the shortcomings I mentioned. Um, congrats to the authors, to the creators and uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.